Welcome back to the Spurs videos. Um, I'm Ashley Miller, once again. I'm Eric Dieter, Spurs Program Coordinator. And we're here today to talk to you about the Synthesis Essay Assignment, your final big assignment of the fall semester. Um, the Synthesis Essay really draws on the work you've been doing all semester. So remember you started with the Annotated Bibliography where you mapped out a variety of positions on the DREAM Act. And then you moved into rhetorical analysis, where you used your analytical skills to break down an argument and explain how someone is being effective in, in making this argument. What you're going to do now is kind of take both of those aspects of, of thinking and rhetorical work and apply them to this new assignment, where essentially what you're going to do is articulate your position in relation to these other positions you've already studied. So you're going to have to do um, two things that draw on your previous work. One, you're going to have to bring back those annotated bibliography sources and position yourself in relation now to these other people that you've already looked at. And the other thing you're going to do is use those skills that you analyzed in rhetorical analysis. And you're going to use rhetorical appeals. You're going to use ethos, pathos, logos. You're going to identify an audience, a situation and you are going to make an argument the same way you've analyzed other people making arguments of their own. Um, and Eric's going to tell you a little more specifically um, some of those skills that you'll be using. Yeah, th that, those are all great points, Ashley. Um, like I said, when I visited everybody's classrooms, the rhetorical analysis work that you do, right, the, construction, the deconstruction of um, what does an argument say, how does it say it, content and structure, I call that the DNA of the critical reading and critical writing skills of college uh, writing, college reading. And you're going to see that in action here because the synthesis is an opinion. But as I said when I visited with everybody, we have opinions in relatively natural ways. It's just human to have an opinion, right? You're born having opinions. What's new here, the value added with the rhetoric and writing program, is teaching you how to have those opinions after some sort of transparent thinking about other people's positions, about transparently and cautiously, methodically thinking about where you fit. So if you think about those cloud maps that you did on the walls of your classroom and you took all these different authors from the reading packet and you said, well, this person's sort of pro and this person's sort of con, but this person's pro for American dream reasons and this person's con for economic reasons and so they're in this different, and you basically did this sort of graph with ideas. And now we're asking you, as Ashley says, to sort of Put yourself on that graph. Put yourself in that cloud map. Where are you on the pro to con scale, the for and against scale? Why? Why are your reasons, right? Because, of course, being for and against it is just your position, and your position is not an argument. It's an orientation towards an argument, as we mentioned when I came to most of your classrooms. All right? So now that you have a position, you have to have reasons. You have to have claims for holding that position. What are your claims? Are they economic? Are they moral? Are they about social justice? Are they about legislation? Are they about fairness? Right? Whatever they happen to be, whatever you tend to think about them, now you need to articulate that. Right? So we've given you a specific prompt, and this is all in the synthesis assignment prompt packet, but basically the prompt is you need to take a position and give reasons for the extent to which the DREAM Act should or should not be a priority for the United States. And, and of course why you believe that, and not why is the, 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 the claims that you'll make, right? So the first part is to take a position, the second part is to take to use some claims and tell us why. Okay? So again we're not asking you is the Dream Act a good or a bad thing, right? That may be part of it, but that's not what we're asking. Let's be clear, what we're asking you is the extent to which this should become law, which is a lot less sexy of a debate than whether or not it's a morally right thing to do or whether or not um, it fulfills the American dream. Although those questions may come into play in your analysis, right? So be careful that you're addressing the prompt that we've asked you and not all the sort of other attendant questions that could go along with it. Okay. Um, anything else along those lines? Or should we move into some maybe some of the some of this advice for writing an essay. Yeah, I think there are a couple of things that you just want to make sure that you do as you plan your essay before you even start writing, and we do have um, some worksheets that you'll see in the next few days to get started on that. Um, you will need four sources for your essay, um, and of those four sources, one of them has to be someone who disagrees with you, a counter-argument, and you're going to have to address that in your essay. You know, why is this opinion that's so different from yours not ultimately the best opinion? Um, that's some rhetorical work you're going to need to do. In addition to those four sources, you'll need to choose an audience for your work. Um, 
And there are lots of possibilities there, right, Eric? Many different audiences you can identify. Absolutely. We don't have um, any preference about who you need to talk with, who you should address, how you should address them, but you need to address somebody. If you, I mean, the entire argument of this course, if you remember everything we've taught you, is that audience is primary. Audience comes first, because after you figure out who am I arguing with, who am I trying to persuade? Who am I trying to inform? Once you have that intended audience in your mind, all the other rhetorical decisions, right? What claims am I going to include and exclude? What rhetorical strategies am I going to employ? How much of each rhetorical strategy am I going to employ? All those decisions are determined by that audience. So when we say select an audience, what we're really telling you to do, and you have to think back to the beginning of the semester, is you have to find a specific community that you want to argue with or that you want to persuade, or that you want to inform, and you have to think about what their commonalities are. What ideologies do they share, right? What are their characteristics of this audience that makes them different from every other audience? And those characteristics, right, that community is going to dictate all the other decisions that you're going to make in your argument. So the same way you've been analyzing how other people have been dealing with audience, now you need to actually address an audience. Yeah, and that's so crucial that you do that early on. Um, as Eric pointed out, every decision you make regarding how you construct this essay will come back to who that audience is. So that's one of the very first things you're going to want to choose as you think about this synthesis essay. Um, the next thing you really need to be aware of also is the situation of your writing. Um, and again, we're giving lots of options. You can choose what situation your writing appears in. You might say, oh, this is an editorial for my local student newspaper. Maybe it's an editorial for a local city newspaper. Um, perhaps instead it's a city council speech that you give, or a speech that you give to a student government meeting at a high school. Um, there are many options, again, the situation. Do you have anything to add? I would just say that, again, think about the audience. Once you have an intended audience, right, a community that shares common places, that have joint characteristics, where are you likely to engage them? Right? So the situation you choose has to make sense. It has to be a logical situation based on that audience. Okay? So you don't want to give a speech to Congress because it's probably not going to happen. But you can give a speech to your local city council. That's something anybody can do. Right? You can give uh, a sermon in your church. That's something that could happen. Right? So again, we don't have a preference about the situation other than that it's logical for the audience and that it's frankly something that might actually happen, that you could actually do if you were so inclined. Right? So we're not asking you to pretend that you're writing an editorial to your local newspaper if, you, if that's what you choose to do. We're actually asking you to write one. I mean, you're smart enough, you know enough about the issue, right? You're being cautious with your use of rhetoric, you're being uh, engaging with the conversation that's already going on. So why not just actually write it? Don't pretend that you're writing it, don't pretend that you're giving a speech, just do it, if that makes sense. And the final thing you'll really need to consider, again, before you launch into the writing of this project, is what precisely is your purpose? What do you want your argument to accomplish? Are you trying to make people think differently about this issue? Do you want them to feel a certain way? Is there some action you actually want them to get up and take after reading or listening to your writing? Um, anything to add to purpose? Yeah, if you were in the college classroom, if you were in that Rhetoric 306 class, we would say that this last essay, the terminology we often use is called an advocacy essay. Right? We want you to advocate for this position. So you're actively asking people to do or not do something, or to believe or not believe something. Okay, that's what the essay asks you to do. But of course, the way you do it, because of the D, because it's the DNA of critical reading and critical writing, is through the analysis, through using other people's thoughts mm -hmm. as evidence or support for your own claims. Okay, so when you think about choosing an intended audience, when you think about choosing a rhetorical situation that's log logical for that audience, when you think about the purpose. Um, be as specific as possible. I think that, that is probably the number one piece of advice. Be as specific and realistic as possible. Okay? So think about the articles that you've read. Think about the arguments that you've seen. Think about the ways that they actually had intended audiences and held that audience in mind as they went through their specific purposes uh, in, in specific situations. Right? Think about that Dick Durbin essay. His essay was exactly spot on. Right? He said exactly what he needed to say for that group of, most of us thought, fellow Congress people. Okay? So similarly, you want to be realistic, you want to be logical, you want everything to be interconnected, and you want to be 
specific. I don't think we can say that enough. Be, be specific. I think that's great advice. Being specific will make the whole process, I think, a lot easier in the long run. Great. So most of this information is um, articulated in the assignment prompt packet. We ask you to go through it with your peers and with your teacher. Before you get going on the writing, we'll have you fill out what's called an action plan. Well, you'll basically are going to be asked to fill out who's my audience, what is my situation, what is my purpose, and one or two succinct, clearly stated sentences. You'll have to outline these things, um, and this is probably what you're going to post to the synthesis question form for your AI partner, your instructor partner to look at and respond to. So they'll look at you, your uh, action plan, and say, okay, you really have a good realistic audience and you have a good realistic purpose that makes sense for that audience and, and, and you have a good rhetorical situation that seems a likely place you would engage that audience and they'll give you some feedback. So that synthesis forum, right, that question asking forum, you can ask anything you want but we're probably also going to ask you to post these action plans uh, and definitely your teachers and peers will look at them to make sure you're on the right track as well but, but it sort of serves as sort of an intellectual outline okay, before you start writing. So the action plans are coming up, the synthesis forum, the questions will come up just as they did with the analysis, uh, the peer review will happen as well, and then of course you'll submit your final um, draft of, of the synthesis essay to the Blackboard and your AI instructor will, will, will give feedback. We're looking forward to reading them. Yeah, and if you have questions, as always, contact us. Take care. Bye-bye.